Prince Harry has been brutally branded second row Harry following his brief trip to the UK to celebrate the Queen's Platinum Jubilee. The Duke and Duchess of Sussex's seating arrangement at St Paul's Cathedral on June 3 has sparked the mockery of the Montecito author. During the service of thanksgiving for the Jubilee, Prince Harry and Meghan Markle joined most members of the firm to pay tribute and celebrate the record-breaking reign of the Queen. Their status as non-working royals was reflected in the seating plan. Despite the Duke of Sussex being sixth in line to the throne, he and Meghan sat in the second row rather than next to the heirs to the throne. The Sussexes were behind the Earl and Countess of Wessex, who have been senior members of the firm since the early 2000s, their children, and the Duke and Duchess of Gloucester, who have served the Crown since the 1970s. More than a week after the Sussexes returned to the US, Montecito author Robert Iringer discussed the relevancy of Meghan and Harry in a comment piece for the Santa Barbara News Press titled The Duke and Duchess of Woke, or Woe. After claiming that the Platinum Jubilee celebrations showed the British firm is more popular than ever and was capable of moving on following Harry and Meghan's damaging claims and allegations launched during their interview with Oprah Winfrey in 2021, Mr. Iringer gave to the Duke the nickname Second Row Harry. He wrote, The Duke's new nickname might as well be Second Row Harry, based on the seating arrangement for a Thanksgiving service inside St. Paul's Cathedral, at which, upon arrival, the Duke and Duchess were booed by spectators. While other non-working royals such as the Tyndalls, Lady Sarah Chatto and Lady Gabriella Windsor arrived by bus to the cathedral, Meghan and Harry were driven there in a separate car. Upon entering the church, the couple was met with a mix of boos and cheers from members of the public standing outside, as noted by commentators on the day. Meghan and Harry were also booed while leaving the cathedral, once again in a separate car from their royal relatives. This was the last public event attended by the Sussexes during their brief stay in the UK. On the first day of the extended bank holiday weekend, the Duke and Duchess were spotted watching the Trooping the Colour Parade alongside other members of the firm from the Major General's office. Much like Harry's cousins Eugenie and Beatrice, he and Meghan were not invited on the balcony of Buckingham Palace to watch the RAF fly past as they no longer have a working role within the firm. The Sussexes spent the third day of Jubilee celebrations privately to mark the first birthday of their daughter Lilibet Lily Diana who, much like her elder brother Archie Harrison, had also traveled across the pond. The family of four returned to California via a private jet on June 5, while events celebrating the Queen's Jubilee were still underway. During their stay in the UK, Meghan and Harry were not photographed alongside Prince Charles the Duchess of Cornwall or the Duke and Duchess of Cambridge, leading to speculation the rift within the family has yet to be healed. Prince Harry was pictured looking pensive being driven away from the airport upon his family's arrival stateside. Commenting on the Duke's expression, Mr. Iringer wrote, One wonders if Harry is beginning to feel like the character Tom Hanks portrayed in the 2000 movie Cast Away. Judging by the glum expression he wore upon arrival at Santa Barbara Airport, the cold shoulders he encountered at his old stomping ground may be taking a toll on his psyche. Or perhaps he misses the pomp and circumstance he once found imprisoning. Where's Wilson when you need him? Mr. Iringer appears to refer to Prince Harry's statement he was trapped within the system while a working royal. Tina also said that, I don't think it's what he wanted in terms of the way he played out. I think there was a slight fantasy that he had that he can be in and out. But you can't pick and choose and you can't be in and out.